I'm quite afraid that the transition period is going to be messy in the sense that some users are not going to be on the latest OS. Some vendors are not going to be supporting all of the features at first. And for at least a few months, I can see how we're going to have the old one and the new one in parallel. And that's going to be absolutely crazy. Apple's SKI network has totally disrupted the user acquisition space on iOS. And now guess what? Everything's changing all over again. Welcome to Mobile Heroes Uncensored. My name is John Goodseer, co-host, of course, as always, is Peggy and Saltz. And today we're talking Scan4. Hey, more postbacks, more campaigns, more data. And guess what? More complexity, plus potentially multiple versions of Scan, different levels of compatibility, different layers in the mobile growth stack. Fun, fun, fun. Today, we're going to dive into what's new, what you need to know. Peggy, who's our expert? Who are we chatting with? That's it, John. We have an expert, right? Thomas Petit, mobile growth advisor, consultant, hitting some amazing numbers in his career. I did a little bit of research, mm -hmm. John. In his personal life, in his career life, he's hit 50x growth of new users while increasing ROI by 2.5x at a fitness app where he was doing some app marketing, some consulting. He's a veteran, I would say a legend. And he's also widened his focus recently to look at activation and monetization for subscription apps, sharing some of that knowledge here today. Who could we have better, John, <laughs> to talk about this? And maybe yourself. The list is very yourself. small of who we could have that would be better. He has literally consulted Seriously. on hundreds of apps. I'm super pumped to have you, Thomas. Yeah, very happy to be here. Thanks for the for the nice word, both of you, especially uh, Peggy. <laughs> uh, it's nice to be here. Uh, and, we're just uh, looking butter. forward. Bit of a <laughs> crystal ball discussion today. Totally crystal ball because we're talking about something that hasn't really been released. The full spec isn't out there. It's just kind of been dangled in front of us like a little bit of a carrot, a candied carrot on a stick. From what you know, from what you've seen, what's the best part of Scan for? I guess uh, Apple, even if they're not very collaborative and they tend to release on their own, they do listen to what people say. And what the best of it is, is definitely that there's a bit more granularity on, on a few level. I think for me, like the two things that are the best, the first one is to have some slight enhancements on, on Windows, especially the fact that we're going to be able to get some level of information that comes after day zero or day zero, one, two, uh, like now the timer getting out, which was ridiculous and not focusing just on day zero, but on long-term retention and monetization is definitely a big, big plus. It, it sounds like something that should have been there all the time, but it's not there right now. So that's a big, big uh, improvement. The other one, uh, let's say that's granularity over time. The other one is the depth of granularity and especially not having only campaign information, but in some limited case, as we may discuss, Maybe have things like maybe at group, maybe at placement, maybe creative. And I think, yeah, besides the, the timing, creative information is really the big, big limitation of a scan network as we know it. So it's not all coming from bad to great, but uh, there is progress for marketers for sure. You told us about the good things packed in there, but there's always going to be a downside. It's better than it was. But what's the worst part that remains? I guess for me, the worst part here is the uncertainty uh, on a number of things, especially around when is it going to be released and most importantly, how. And when I say how, I'm quite afraid that the transition period is going to be messy in the sense that some users are not going to be on the latest OS. Some vendors are not going to be supporting all of the features at first. And for at least a few months, I can see how we're going to have the old one and the new one in parallel. And that's going to be absolutely crazy. And so this is kind of like a bit of uncertainty, maybe two years from now, this won't be a big one, but it's also the complexity because Apple is trying to answer some of the marketers need, but at the same time, they have their own uh, course. And so the multiplication of different systems, not only the old one and the new one, but within SKAD network 4.0. There are cases where you get some cases where you get other. And I think organizing around that 
I hope the final specifications are going to be a bit more developed because I'm a little bit afraid that how they are put now, especially for smaller advertisers, this is convoluted and hard to understand. Of course, more sophisticated advertiser will deal with it, but uh, it's not simple. Uh, short answer, like, it's not simple. And did I hear, Thomas, did I hear you say that in two years it'll all be okay? <laughs> <laughs> I said two years. I didn't say we'll be fine. I said two years. Uh, and I, I didn't pick this number randomly. People underestimate the, the time it will, it will come. F first, the time it will be released, which I think is going to be at least six months. Uh, Apple say late this year, which to me doesn't mean it's coming without 16 in September, but rather very end of the year. Then a bit of adoption from advertiser and publisher. I think that part is going to go fast, maximum a quarter. But then users are not necessarily on the latest iOS version, and this might be a problem in a transition period. People overestimate the pace of adoption. Because even if 60% of users migrate in a quarter, that leaves like a huge chunk of users who don't. And I had this problem very recently, like one last week and one this week with some data from user on iOS 14, that was actually a significant chunk of users that were misaccounting in, in, in one case, it's not really important what it was. And then there's also the transition. I mean, if we look back, we're roughly one year from the release of SKR network in, like, in, the, in the wild. And there's still a lot of business that are adjusting and testing stuff. And I mean, it's hard to figure out. So let's say one year for everything to be there and then maybe another year to actually figure it out because it's complex. Depends on the level. Of course, some people are going to jump in very, very fast, but yeah, I think it's going to be more than a year before SCAD Network 4.0 is the standard. I, I think you're hundred percent right because recently on a webinar, we had a poll, you know, how many of you feel good about your implementation of SCAD network and literally 9% felt good. 9% of the marketers and we had hundreds, I think it was like 300 marketers on that webinar, all mobile marketers, 9% felt comfortable. So like you said, a year after there's still so much uncertainty in the market. So high level. Uh, in case somebody's been under a rock, here's what you're going to get with scan for. You can get three postbacks, not one. You're going to get more granularity potentially in a new source ID field, which is the old campaign ID field. Probably the disappearance of timers, although there's some complexity around when those might come or not in terms of updating conversion values. You get conversion values that go down as well as go up. And some new testing infrastructure, which is good because, of course, so many people had problems connecting the wires. You talked a little bit about the complexity here. This really, it seems good. There's more. There's longevity of data. It's not just one post back. There's potentially more data if you beat crowd anonymity or privacy thresholds. But there's a lot more to think about here, too, right? There's a lot more complexity. Yeah, there's a lot more complexity. For the most advanced advertiser, this is super welcome because they will get more data and because they're able to make sense of all the complexity and, and to understand, okay, I don't have, I don't have that value. I'm putting it there and to deal with it. I think for a lot of advertisers that are already catching the last wave that raised the bar even further. Some that not necessarily have the infrastructure to properly ingest all this data. I mean, when you see what we have now, like people are not finding it easy and increasing the level of, okay, in some case I get that value. In some case I get no value. In some case I've got another value. And then there's another post back that comes and I need to deal with it. I don't think it's going to be easy. Probably some great news for consultant helping around the topic, but not necessarily for advertisers. <laughs> job security. <laughs> yeah. Apple just gave me two years of guaranteed job for sure. Like, <laughs> thank, thank you, Tim. That's like, awesome. <laughs> Uh -uh. Hey, it's not just you. I mean, we need job security too, right? The more stuff to talk about, investigate, ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> Total mini series on this. We can keep it going, John. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I've been hearing marketers a little bit trying to see the, the silver lining, the optimistic side, perhaps. They're like, hey, you know, get more data in your new source ID. The old campaign ID up to four digits from two, that's good. I heard a lot of people at a dinner recently that I was at saying, you know, this is good. This is going to be really good. And then you have enough scale to enable crowd anonymity. So what do you see 
marketers, I'm hearing them say, this is really good. This is good news. How do you see them using it? Well, for me, there are three three directions here. The improvement is how we want it. We would love to use a scale network today and we can't. For me, the big elephant in the room is creative. At the end of the day, the game is not one of how I know the last hack on the Facebook platform or whatnot. It's how good is your creative and today we lost that data. So I guess the biggest change is the way we're going to use this extra information to actually receive data about one creative another within a campaign. That is a big game changer because this is how we improve uh, results. This is also how we understand what users like or not. And even in some audience, what they, let's say, react better to, which eventually leads to better user experience as well, instead of just trying stuff until it works. So I think that's better for everybody. And that's going to be like the... That's the first thing I would try to improve is, okay, how do I get better data on creative? And that's probably the level I'm going to focus on. There's one thing that is a little bit annoying for some advertisers right now is we don't get country level in the post pack. So of course, if you just like, I don't know, advertise all across the US, maybe this is not critical. Although for a number of advertisers, it is because they're operating locally. I don't know, um, delivery or products are not available in all states and so on. That's particularly true internationally. I mean. Because of the number we need for this privacy threshold and crowd anonymity, we tend to, and for machine learning optimization, we tend to bundle a lot of geographies together. So I'm going to carry it a little bit, but maybe I'm putting all of Latin America together, or I'm putting Canada and Australia and UK together, or, or some Southeast Asian country together, because their users are a little bit more similar in terms of how they react to my ads and how they monetize and so on. And today we're completely blind on that. So another level in depth is maybe using location and, and Apple quoted it in a, in a, in its example. I find it lies that they didn't put at creative in there. Like they mentioned, besides the campaign, you will be able to see two other fields that you decide on. So everybody can make their own choice. And their examples are location, which I think is relevant, even if it's not the most relevant. And the other one is ad placement, which in some cases is interesting yes. to get. I mean, I want to understand if Instagram performs better than Facebook or YouTube performs better than AdMob or things like this. But it is secondary compared to the importance of having creative data. Uh, so that was kind of funny they didn't pick that that example. And so that's definitely that's definitely the biggest improvement here and how we're going to use it. Like the second one is as we geared our product and our campaigns to reaction in the very uh, first in experience of the app and in, in the majority of cases in the first day, I actually recommend personally against using the timer today, even if there are some use cases where it might work. For a number of businesses, this is problematic because the signals of, oh, that user is actually interested in my product and it's, it's coming not on first day, but it's coming maybe after a week or after a month. And so having this timer, like this new logic, not with a timer, but having a secondary post back and third post back after a week and after a month is really good news because it will help with not a lot of precision, but it will help us understand like, Hey, I've pushed really hard on this particular event on the first day. Is this actually converting into a cohort that loves my product and retains and interested as well? Not only just return on ad spend, which obviously is what we're aiming for, but also like is this actually relevant for the user I'm reaching? And again, I think this is in everybody's interest so that the design of product is not so hardcore in monetizing the first day, but actually enabling people to retain, which is what we want as advertiser, but user at the end of it, I guess they don't install an app to throw it the day after is because they're disappointed. So that helps too. And I hope this is good for users as well. That's another good segue because I wanted to talk about postbacks. And of course, now you have the potential of getting three postbacks. First one, zero to two days. Second one, three to seven days. Third one, uh, eight to 35 days or something along those lines. And when I first heard those, I thought, oh, that's really interesting. And I figured, hey, there's a line connecting postback one and two and three. Of course, that's not the case. <laughs> you don't know that it's a postback from the same user. It's cohorted data. That's great. We can, get, we can reconstruct some cohorts from that but how do you see marketers using these postbacks because you could get uh you know a postback on day one with no payload no conversion value you could get then a postback uh you know for the second one but you could get you could not get a, a payload for the third one as well if crowd anonymity is not satisfied right so there's some complexity here correct yeah there's some complexity on um one thing that i found not, not surprising but i find interesting to mention is that 
no matter how much data you're sending back, uh, you never get the find value on those second and third post back. So it's either you get none of it or you get this low, medium, high value. So I think it's fine. I mean, uh, it's already an indication of it, but you never get the, the full value no matter what the scale. I guess the way this is going to be used really depends on the product. Like in the sense that we're not aiming for the same thing. But typically in, in subscriptions where, where I work most, and I guess gaming are going to use this very differently. And even within gaming, probably social casino, I'm not going to use it the same way as casual games and hyper casual games. But uh, I'll talk about what I know a little bit more. For subscriptions today, like one of the pro is that a lot of trials start on first day. Like people start the trial and then they experience the pro there. So it's decent because we know who's starting the trial or not, which is a decent signal, uh, but it's not great in the sense that a lot of trials actually don't convert to payment. I guess the industry standard is maybe like 40% conversion or something like this. And we never get this. I never know, oh, oh, I'm pushing people into the trial, but maybe the conciliation rate is really high. Maybe the refund rate is really high. So I guess one of the great thing about this secondary and third post bags for subscription apps is has the trial converted to actually a, a subscription and not just a trial, but actually money that's coming because a trial doesn't mean money is coming my way. A trial means some money might come my way or not. And so one direction is definitely going to be this. Are the trial, have the trial converted? And I think that's a critical piece of information for, for subscription apps. The other one is usage. And it's a bit of a dark, like dark secret, like kind of the kind of things people don't want to say out loud, but there is a decorrelation between revenue retention and usage retention sometimes. Maybe not in games, but subscription they are. Like people who do subscribe, but actually never use. People who don't subscribe, but use a lot. And so I guess another direction here is going to be to see, okay, do people actually activate and retain? So that could be, have they reached the 10th meditation? Or have they done at, have they done at least a workout on week four? Or have they applied a filter on their photo between day eight and 30 or something like this? And I think this is really, really valuable so that we don't gear all our product to pushing people into trial, but actually reconcile a little bit. Okay, I need revenue back because, I mean, this is a company, it needs money to operate, it's not an NGO, but I also want happy user that retain for the long term and actually optimizing for that. And so the simple way I'm looking at using this second and third post back at this, confirming revenue and, and having on the side in parallel a view on retention and are people actually happy using the product, which is something that, that matters a lot. That's really, really good insight. And actually you've got into a few things that we didn't even talk about yet, which is the course and the fine values, right? Your first false pack could be course if you don't have enough crowd anonymity, not enough users in a cohort or a campaign, but it could be fine, which is up to four digits of data versus the two digits in the old campaign ID. The second, third post pack are just course values. It's one, two, or three, zero, one, or two, you know, it's three values. It's good, bad, okay, or something like that, whatever you want to decide on that to be. That is actually really interesting to me because you've been forced in scan three and earlier to really put scale into campaigns in order to maximize signal, in order to minimize data loss to privacy thresholds. You could theoretically, I'm just thinking out loud, tell me if you think this is insane. You could theoretically in under scan four, not worry about scale. You could spread money around a little bit more and say, you know what? I'm not gonna look for my fine values right now. I just want my course values, even for post back one. And where I see a pocket of interest, even you know, I can record in three values, then I'll put scale there. Would that even be interesting? I'm happy you see the glass half full. Personally. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Okay. Rain on my parade. Let's go. <laughs> Personally, I'm, ha I'm seeing the glass half empty. We will know who's right, but we'll only know later because there is a very high uncertainty on, on what are going to be the new threshold for triggering one and the other. The way I'm seeing it, Apple is extremely careful about the fact that we can't reconcile information and look at user data. And I guess, complete, complete wild guess, I, I have no clue, but I guess that the privacy threshold for the fine value is going to be high. It's going to be higher than it is now. So if I had to guess, I would say 
privacy threshold are gonna remain for the cause value in the set, like like the zero one two the uh, the general value. Like if you run this small campaign, like you say, it's possible you get none of it because there's also that case where you get nothing like at all. So let's say you want to split up these countries I was talking about before. Like I don't know, I've got an app that's very successful in in Chile and Costa Rica, but those countries they are too small to get enough data to get the conversion values today. I don't think we're going to get them either in the future and I will have to keep bundling it. Uh, it's just in some case where I have all of Latin America combined, maybe I'm starting to get like the fine value. And the reason I'm saying I'm seeing the glass half empty, even though there is new thing is I don't believe it's going to solve that problem at all. I think that problem is going to remain exactly the way it is. Ah, I always have full. Great. <laughs> awesome. Um, <laughs> is that like uh, for bigger advertiser and most sophisticated advertiser, there is a lot of good news here, but I work with a lot of early stage startup with lower budget. And to be honest, the first version of SKN network, I've been a massive blow for them. They don't have the scale to operate even in their biggest geography. They don't have the, the experience to deal with the complexity of conversion value. And they try, I don't know, like at the beginning, of, like a couple of weeks ago, I was dealing with an advertiser saying, yeah, I want to start advertising on network X. It doesn't really matter who it is. My budget is $50 per day. And I was a tier one country. So typically a country where installs are quite expensive, let's say five plus dollars. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, but. Like this, this is money wasted. The network won't be able to learn anything. And it doesn't matter whether it's Facebook or TikTok or Google or whoever, like it's, it just can't be done. Like, because it needs to be operated. Like you're going to throw this money out of the window for sure. Like, and the way I see it, this is making it worse because that situation is going to remain. I don't expect it for it to be a lot improved. And I hope I'm going to be wrong. But on top of it, they got an extra disadvantage compared to the big ones, which is the big ones today yeah. are half blind and suddenly they're going to get a little bit more vision on it. But those smaller advertisers won't. It's making the gap even bigger, which is the part that I'm slightly concerned about. I understand that not every objective can be fulfilled, you know, marketers dream and fairness in competition and full privacy, like. There, there are conflicts between those different points, but I think this is, and this is maybe the, the negative part of this SKAD Network 4 version. I didn't want to start with this when you say what's the worst, so I picked something else, but I think this is still <laughs> worrying that it even more favors the bigger player. It even most favors concentration and that's fine. I mean, uh, it's okay. It's just. I work with a lot of early stage and this is not going to be making their life any easier. And I don't expect them to receive a lot of this fine value, to be honest. So I just want to parse what you said there and make sure that I got it. Uh, and I know Peggy's got a question on fraud, which we're going to get to in a moment. No, I'm just in shock, actually, John, because think it through. I mean, he's just basically saying, you know, the mobile app economy that has to be healthy because there's a long tail and mid-sized developers. Well, guess what? You're toast. <laughs> <laughs> I have to deal with that right now. You parse it, I'll digest it. <laughs> yeah, well, what, what I'm thinking is, see, because where I where my headspace was, okay, now you've got the course values. Apple will reduce the privacy threshold to get those course values. And what Thomas is thinking is actually, they're going to stay the same and you'll get those course values yeah. there. So you'll need that minimum threshold of maybe 30 installs per day per campaign to maybe get decent amount of data. The more the, the, more, the better, obviously. And to get the fine, you're going to need even more. That is just a different way of thinking about it that I haven't I'm, thought of. It makes a lot of sense. I'm just um, guessing. I, yeah, I, I hope you're scary. right. I, I hope I'm wrong on this one. Like uh, I, I, <laughs> a, a year from now, six years from now, uh, let, let's call uh, each other again and, and see, <laughs> see who owes <laughs> some beer to the other one. I, I really hope I'm paying that, uh, that uh, round. So half blind, um, startups maybe not even on the mark here at all. Let's talk about other slightly possibly depressing outcomes. Still no functionality for fraud, right? So there's an opportunity to create impressions at will. What do you say? About yeah, that? I haven't given too, too deep of a brainstorm onto that topic. It's true that with SKR network, like some people were completely Oh yeah, uh, attribution is moving on Apple side, fraud is going to go, which I think was completely laughable because I mean, as long as there's money flowing, 
there will be fraud, you know, one way or another. It's it's rather how easy it is and how easy to catch the fraudster that that change. But wherever there's money, there's fraud. Um, so that's a very legitimate question. Mm. I'm actually not entirely sure about how that translates, about what Apple might be doing in the background to fight against that. And they typically don't mention any of it. They also typically have to change the, the stance of, yeah, yeah, we're, we're controlling this. Like, um, of course, for us, like there's less transparency about what, what, what is going on. But um, yeah, that, that one is hard to predict, to be honest. There's a true concern about the possibility that these mechanics might not be solved in the next version. But it remains to be seen when it's in the wild. Like typically, Froster evolved the fastest, and I guess we'll see it soon enough. Yeah, but I'm not too sure how easy it's gonna be. One thing that was really missing there are many things from Scan Three was web to app. Now we have that back. That is interesting. Uh, do you think that unlocks some potential? On paper, that's fantastic. You know, glass half full. Uh, of of course, in the current version, like nothing is planned for web to app. And I think this is not great, especially a, a lot of subscription apps are expanding from being app only to have a web activity, whether it's through a web onboarding or just more presence on the web and on, and on YouTube and influencers and actually have this need to like, not everything is app to app. So this is a recognition from, from Apple that there is a world out there and that web to app is, I believe, growing. Five years ago, nobody was using it too much, but now it's becoming like one of the many tools uh, we have. And so that's good recognition. Apple is taking this into account. I'm concerned that we're going to have to wait until SKR Network 5.0 to actually see it in practice. And here I'm seeing two limitations. They haven't published that much around it. Like the details haven't been completely released. So they still have a few months to update. So this is a message I passed. Uh, the first one is that this is Safari only, which definitely is a problem. Chrome will not be taken into account for the web to app in Scan Network 4.0. Are you sure about that? I thought it was simply just a way of constructing a URL. Um, I'm not 100% sure, and I guess we'll have to see. But I've read somebody pretty smart say they think it is. Having actually updated their documentation, I don't know how it got. This is another it. thing for a beer bet. This is another yeah. thing for a beer bet. I. My understanding right now cool. is that it's any browser because it's simply okay. a link construction. So you could construct a link and it will notify the scan framework, whether locally or in the cloud. Uh, but I could be wrong on that. So fantastic, your bet. There we go. Fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. And it sounds like another two-year wait. By the way, guys, <laughs> not That's two crazy. years. No, not two not, years, not, Peggy. That, no, that one. Fast. That one we're gonna see it straight when it gets released. Like, so I'm not concerned. Okay. Hopefully by Christmas. You know, maybe it's gonna be a glue vine instead, uh, John. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I love it. Actually, because because you mentioned that, maybe my second point is also wrong. Is I read, I think from Alex Bauer, but I'm not sure that this was planned for ads, but it may or may not work for own and operated places. So I was like, mm -hmm. huh, mm -hmm. if this is true, and I don't know if it is, that's a problem because yeah, I want to expand yeah. to like ad network down the web and affiliate and stuff. But a lot of the use case for web to app, they're not this, they're from my own website and my own channels and, and my YouTube channel. Yeah, and I was like, page. A lot of web to app is not an ad. It's just an other place where people come from that might be an email. And so if this is only for advertising, this is disappointing. <coughs> so let's see again on this one. If I'm not it actually sure. is a link. If it's a link construction, yeah. I don't see how you could make it only for an ad. Yeah. So uh, hope that's, that's, that's beer bet number three, Peggy. Uh, we're, we're, we're... No, no, th th those two, they're the <laughs> same. It's going to be a bad day when it actually happens. <laughs> th those two, they're the same. We bundled them. I was going to say, John, remember when we had Shamat a while back? Right? Yes. And he was like, oh, web to app is huge. And all the companies I'm seeing that are really raking in the revenues, they're doing web to app. And I'm just thinking, hmm, you know, this is making that less clear, more difficult. Uh, 
It doesn't sound like the way Shaman said that we should be celebrating. Well, it I, just you know, I, I'm going to keep no. with my glass half full um, thing <laughs> okay. right here, you know. Um, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to hope that that's actually pretty simple. It's a link construction. And if you have a deep linking vendor or an MMP, you're going to be able to do it and just manage it and all that. We'll see. We'll see. I think we need to bring this to a close. Um, because I have a question. Though, for Go Thomas, ahead. Because Jump I have in. to ask this because you've painted a fairly dire picture, Thomas. <laughs> no, I'm trying to, I'm trying to surface both things. It's not like suddenly all, all the problems are solved. I, I don't, I didn't want to paint it that bad. Uh, it's still a great improvement. Like uh, there's some gray area that needs yeah. to be confirmed, but, uh, but yeah, it's a step forward. So let's, let's cheer up. <laughs> I, I wanted to get that out of you. I didn't want to leave it on that note of like, okay, and now what are we supposed to do to succeed in this environment? You know, we could end it right here. Um, good. Excellent. Okay. John, you were down. Okay, now. good, good, good. So we got to end this. Thomas actually just showed us before we started recording his positive test. He's COVID positive right now. Good thing this is all virtual, but he's getting over it. That's good. I'm getting over it. Peggy hasn't had, you know, the pleasure and the privilege yet, but you know, it's yeah, coming, it's Peggy, coming. it's coming. It. Don't worry about that. So let's bring this to a close this way. Um, we have scan four rolling out sometime. My guess is it's going to be, I don't know, November ish. I don't think they'll do it pre Christmas. That would be too grinchy. I mean, you know, December 23rd or something like that. That'd be too grinchy. What's your top tip for mobile marketers on iOS as scan four rolls out? I guess because we're, we're before the release, we still keep a little bit in the know and listen to this kind of content and chat with their peers, like kind of to be ready. You don't need to prep and be ready now, but at least like, you know, what's coming, you know, it's on your roadmap, you know, more or less like, Hmm, at that point, I'm going to have to worry about that. Maybe you can a little bit anticipate about, okay, not everything needs to be done on day zero. If this is how you're gearing your product today, but just like. Keeping me informed about when it's coming at the big lines, I think is the the best thing you can do. So stay informed in the industry, uh, vendors blog, uh, independent slacks and, and webinars like this is the best the marketer can do. There's a lot of uncertainty that needs to be answered. So at the moment, we're going to close to the date. This is where this is going to be most valuable. Obviously, of what we say today, like a lot of it is, is uh, speculative. Let's say that the release is November-ish. October and November is definitely a time where you want to be plugged on Mobile Heroes and listen to John and Peggy's invites. And that's my, that's my recommendation. <laughs> it sounds a bit wow. cheesy, but that's really what I think. So, like, you have to stay informed at I, the right I, time. I think you're right. I think you're right. And the $100 check is in the mail, by the way, for that little plug. <laughs> that's going to be quite a few <laughs> beers, John. <Yep. laughs> I know, that's beer. a lot of beer. <laughs> We're up to four beer vets at this point, guys. We're just going to go for a six pack. Okay. At this well, point, at least the expenses, at least the trip expense is expensable, right? I mean, like to probably to lift off. <laughs> we'll tell Dennis about that. Absolutely. Thanks, Dennis. <laughs> Excellent. It's we want to go on your boat, Tom Thomas. <laughs> That's what we want. Yeah. Thomas, this has been a ton of fun. Um, it's been super informative. Uh, as you spent, as you mentioned, there's a lot we don't know. And, uh, and so we got some beer bets on that. Um, thank you so much for taking this time. It was a pleasure to exchange with you. Uh, let's see how this develops. Maybe we we'll talk again in a couple of months and we'll have even a little bit more clarity. It will be a joy to, to come back and see what you discovered through the other guests. Uh, thank you very much. Great to have you, Thomas. And I would say that's a date. <laughs> date taken. Excellent. Thank you so much. <laughs> and thank you to all listeners. We really do appreciate you. Hope you're enjoying it. Let us know on social if you are. And let us know if you want to come and we'll have you on the show. If you're a mobile hero or you know of someone who is, then fill out the interest form over at shorturl.at forward slash JKSKT. Also, Liftoff has a Slack for mobile heroes and people in the mobile ecosystem. There's a link on the screen. And if you're listening to the podcast, it's at info.liftoff.io slash slack dash sign up. It's pretty cool. There's smart people there. And you know what? They probably need you too. And you have probably been completely blown away by all the insights on this show. And you want your transcript. And you can have it because the transcripts are over at Liftoff's website. Go to liftoff.io, click on Heroes, and then click on Podcast. 
I actually personally love transcripts because I read way faster than people talk. So that's a great way to get insights really, really quickly. Until next time, this is John Kutz here. Thank you so much for joining. And this is Peggy Ann Saltz signing off for Mobile Heroes Uncensored. <laughs>